Man fan. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you like my videos. We're trying to hit 1 million subs by the end of this month. And as you can tell, I'm very close to hitting su such an amount. Uh, so... L l let's just, um, get this out of the way. There will be spoilers for the anime. I'm gonna try not to spoil the manga, since I actually want you to check that out. And I feel like it's kind of pointless if I spoil some stuff. But, uh, yeah, let's start with the anime and how it handles hype, makes shit up, and loses what makes the Battle Network series unique. Uh, let's start with the whole reason I felt I needed to make this video. The hype. Holy shit! Are there some hype moments? Like the Tenkaichi Budokai, or the introduction of this mysterious, shadowy figure who seems like he's gonna be the biggest challenge of them all? Now, the World Martial Arts Tournament, uh, the Net Battle Tournament, the N1 Grand P, Pre, is alright. It, it's what you expect in an anime. But instead of going over every round, because they don't have that budget, they sort of just jump around. But I gotta tell you, the fact everyone was there was pretty hype. I had to re-record this because I got something wrong originally. Uh, I originally I said that Proto Man and Mega Man uh, killed off the big bad World 3 just by fighting. But no, they caused Pharaoh Man to come, which, it, that that's hype. They kill off Mega Man with Pharaoh Man. Until... Mega Man's resurrected, World 3 kidnaps, uh, uh, Pharaoh Man, and they fucking, he, I'll, I'll get to the bullshit part about th this scene, but, Pharaoh Man just, while negotiating with Wily, just fucking kills him. This was the big bad that was hyped from the beginning of the series. <laughs> And he just fucking kills him! He... Th that's it! I- I rewatched this! It, it's just an explosion and he kills him! The, you th you think that would be the low point of the series? But you- you'd really be wrong. So you know the figure- the, the shadowy figure I mentioned? Figure. Well, he's this Mega Man series' base. And he's the remnants of Pharaoh Man or something like that. I don't want to explain it all. But basically there's this big virus beast destroying that city. Base reveals himself and what you think would happen is him destroying the thing in like one blow. Because he's base. Like if you played Mega Man 7, you know this is just cooler Mega Man. And, and th there's a lot of hype surrounding him because they show him at like the end of a couple episodes. But uh, no. The exact opposite happens. The fucking virus beast. He. 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 he, he <laughs> play the clip. Play the clip. Play the clip. Play the clip. Yeah, he gets one shot by the virus beast. He. He was literally introduced officially and was gone as soon as he arrived. That's really the main reason I just wanted to talk about this anime. It really teaches you how to not deal with hype, as it does everything wrong with what you would think would be something cool. Now, there's a part where they just made shit up. Uh, I don't know how many times they made shit up, but there's just one part in particular that stood out to me. <laughs> and it's in the episode where Mega Man comes back from the dead. Uh, I'm not explaining that either. Uh, but he can't use battle chips or something, uh, cause they can't jack in near where, uh, Pharaoh Man is, the enemy that they're fighting. So Lan's father, he suggests style changing. Now you might be like, oh, Mega Man's iconic ability, but it's not explained in the slightest why the fuck Mega Man can just do this. He's never shown signs of having this ability, nor has he grown stronger in any way to w warrant this ability other than fucking dying. That's it. He, he wouldn't even... It wouldn't even be a problem if, like, episode one he had this ability. But since no other character seems to be able to do anything remotely similar... <laughs> it just seems out of place for Mega Man. Which... Boy... That... 
That, that's a shocking sentence to say. Mega Man style changing being out of place. But, yeah. L let's talk about the final point I have. Uh, the show losing its, um... Its uniqueness. Now, this show's universe is entirely based around little internet men and a woman... <laughs> ...role. So it would only make sense they eventually go to real world, right? Why the fuck would you think that's a good idea? That removes the entire point of them being internet people. <gasps> Starting shit that messes with the real world, and it doesn't affect them. Removing the internet makes things more real, but at the same time, that just makes this shit into a magic girl, girl anime. I swear to fucking god, they just made it into a magical girl, magical girl anime. <laughs> I think- I, I don't know anything about Star Force either, but I think that might be, like, something to do with Star Force- Star Force might have something to do with, like, Magical Girl. Not really. But I feel like it's kind of like a Magical Girl world. That's- okay. I'm not saying it's a Magical- Magical Girl anime. Star Force. But I'm pretty sure Star Force's plot, from what I hear, is a dude getting the abilities to, like, be Mega Man in real world. But not really. But he saves the world. So it's basically a magical magical girl anime. So why are they doing this in the Battle Network series, too? But uh, Star Force aside, I don't, I don't know anything about Star Force. I could be entirely fucking wrong. Who knows? But yeah, uh... Where was I? Um... Y y yeah, you get the transformation sequence. Monsters causing real-world havoc. I- the, the show sort of just fell off for me. Uh, uh, made me drop the sequel, Axis. Uh... But yeah. Overall, the show wasn't really good to begin with, so I don't know why I stuck with it. Sigh. If only there was a good version of this series. Enter Mega Man NT Warrior, the manga. This does everything correctly compared to the anime. It lives up to its hype, it explains abilities, and it takes advantage of its uniqueness. I don't want to spoil too much, and I'm not done with the manga yet. I'm on volume 5. But I can't recommend this more as a Mega Man fan. It starts out slow and is low-key anticlimactic anti also. But at, at least they deal with the p big bad. And they actually tackle some things that the the anime failed to. Like popularity, gaining popularity from d busting these crimes. Which I think is a really cool idea. Like land getting popular from this. And Mega Man being known across the internet as like this hero. But, uh, yeah, you, th that's what you'd expect from, like, the- it's more realistic, is what I'm trying to say. And it it, it- it- it builds up hype. It builds up hype. Like, based in this one, he is super hype, <laughs> and Mega Man also gets super hype. It, I- I- I love- I love the manga. Uh... But, granted, the big bads are usually dealt with quickly. It, it's, it's a manga. It's based off of how quickly you can read it. It's a children's manga, so it takes like an hour to read one volume. Maybe I'm over-exaggerating, but still. It, it, it still gives awesome moments. So, it, it's if you want the NT Warrior experience, just read the fucking manga. Do not watch the anime. I made the mistake of watching the anime. Uh, it was not worth it in my opinion. That's all I have to say. If you like this, like the video. If you don't, dislike it. Uh, subscribe, please. I I'm not actually trying to hit a million subs, but I would like a couple more subs, please.